Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP. I'm also going to talk about real world events that are playing out as well. But what I'm about to show you will should make you very bullish on Ripple and XRP. Because this shows you what's coming. So let's go back to December 20th, 2022. There are many, there's many paths to becoming a stablecoin issuer. You can get a Wyoming or ne Nebraska special purpose depository institutions. It is fascinating. There is no national money transmitter bill. You have to get all 50 states or become a bank. Take a listen to this. I absolutely agree. I think we badly need prudential regulation that are uh, that, that requires congressional action right now. You just can't fit, you know, today's new innovation into archaic definitions and archaic rules. So we definitely need new regulation, and hopefully, something like a stablecoin bill gets passed, um, if not this year, early next year. I think the reason we haven't seen legislation is because it's actually harder than people expect. You know, you look at stable coins right now, there, there are many paths to becoming a stable coin issuer. You can get a New York State trust charter. You can get a national bank trust charter. You can get a Wyoming or Nebraska special purpose depository institution charter. You can go the circle route and get, you know, money transmitter licenses, right? And so I think the questions that uh, folks on the Hill are dealing with right now is, you know, how many of those options should we preserve? And then you get into issues around what states are doing and, and things of that nature. And so, um, you know, this when you get into the details, it's actually not that simple. And I think that's kind of where some of the negotiations between um, Chair Waters and, and Congressman McHenry uh, broke down. So, I mean, I'm not in the prediction business, um, but I, you know, if it hasn't happened yet, I, I'm kind of skeptical that it'll happen anytime but soon. It, it is fascinating that there is no national money transmitter ability. You have to get 50 states or become a bank. It's, it's yeah. shocking when you... When, when so you have to get all 50 states or become a bank. Like I said in yesterday's video, I think Ripple is becoming a bank. And look at what Elon Musk is doing. Elon Musk says X could replace banks next year. Elon Musk is steering X to become a comprehensive financial hub aiming to replace traditional bank accounts by the end of 2024. During an internet call, Musk expressed ambitions to encompass all monetary transactions on X's platform, extending beyond mere payments to cover the broader financial spectrum. Now, what is Elon Musk doing? He's going out there getting money transmitter license all around the United States. Same thing Ripple is doing. Ripple confirms approval in 31 U.S. states for money transmitter license. Now, since then, I think Ripple is now up to 40. But I think Ripple is becoming a bank. I said that in yesterday's video as well. I think Elon Musk is going in the same direction. But look at beyond that. Look beyond the money transmitter license. What else does Ripple have going on? They have custody, a place to store your value. Kind of like a bank. You put your money in the bank and they store it there for you. Then they lend and borrow it out. Same thing that Ripple's pushing towards, lending and borrowing. Look beyond that. Now they're coming up with a stable coin. What does JP Morgan have? A, its own coin, JP Morgan coin. The difference between JP Morgan coin and Ripple's new stable coin is... No other bank wants to use JP Morgan coin. However, they will utilize Ripple stablecoin because it's not tied to any one bank. Ripple is on the path to becoming a massive bank. That's what I see coming. And you should be very bullish on that. That's what I was telling you in yesterday's video as well. I think Elon's going that same direction. Now, a lot of people ask me, what about a massive cyber attack? Well, this goes all the way back to 2021. IMF, uh, 10 countries simulate cyber attack on the global financial system. So if they were running simulations like this, this could be what comes in the future. 
They, you know, the banks are in trouble right now. What if they just brought about a massive cyber attack and all of a sudden they blame it on this country or that country? And then all of a sudden we have the rise of the new financial system. That could be what they were planning for us all along. Dollar supply added now before negative 713 billion 285 million 784,454 dollars after 112 billion 255 million 515,918. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but a change has started happening without us knowing it. I think this is leading to the reevaluation of precious metals. These amounts were zero just recently, and now all of a sudden, there's a value put in here as the money supply got bigger. But we'll keep an eye on that as well. The U.S. economy now has 63 banks on the brink of default, according to the FDIC. Over $500 billion of paper losses held by banks, declining GDP growth with rising inflation. Over 50% of Americans believe we are in a recession. Lowest mortgage demand in over 30 years. A record $17.7 trillion in total household debt. How is this a soft landing? This is not even sustainable. And you know, I'm going to talk more about the banks in a minute. So let's talk about the jobs. Justin, U.S. job openings in April tumbled by 296,000 to 8.059 million. That was the lowest since February 2021 and much worse than the 8.370 million expected. Not to mention March job openings were revised lower from 8.488 million to 8.355 million. The weak job, the weak jolts reports adds to evidence of a slowing labor market. A lot of people are giving up. A lot of people are quitting that second and third job that they were holding to make ends meet. And you know, nothing's going to get better until inflation comes down, until the housing market gets it reevaluated as well. I honestly think that's coming. You know, people cannot afford rent anymore. I mean, there's rent now on one and two bedroom apartments over two grand a month. Something has to give is what I'm saying. And I think whatever it is, it's definitely coming. But let's get back to the banks because I was talking about bail-ins back in 2022. And people back then were like, oh, that's never going to happen. Everybody's insured up to $250,000. But when the FDIC is talking like this, you know bail-ins are coming. Take a listen. Whether there are some market tests of whether you're being heard. And I think about TLAC. So TLAC should spread, should respond to good and bad news about the institutions. And it's really important. I mean, it's a little bit conflicted, right? I mean, it's important that people understand they can be bailed in, but you don't want a huge run on the institution. But they have, I mean, they're going to be. That's, and, and it could. Take notice, he said there's going to be, not maybe, there's going be to be. an early warning signal to the FDIC and the primary regulators when these things happen. And there may be some other prices, this is uh, similar to what Jay was saying, in the market that you can tell whether people understand how the, who's going to be protected, who isn't going to be protected. It would be, I think, an interesting study to look at the evolution of market prices in a situation like March of 2020, for example, and see whether people understood what might happen. Most people don't understand this at all. Most people don't even know this video exists. So the FDIC going on record discussing bail-ins. To anyone who argues that bail-ins only affect depositors with over $250,000 because FDIC covers under that amount. FDIC has less than 1.3%, $125 billion 
of funds to cover all insured deposits, $9 trillion, they are grossly underfunded. So imagine a handful of banks collapse right now. It doesn't matter if you ha have under $250,000 in the bank. The FDIC cannot cover you. And that's why they were talking about bail-ins in the first place. Because they are coming. There's no hiding it. You know it's going to happen. It's the same reason that I'm always telling people, get your money out of the banks. The banks are not safe. But people outside of crypto and people that don't know that this video exists, they will argue with you all day long. They'll just print more money and fix the problem. Listen, the end of printing money is coming as well. You know, on June 9th, when that agreement with the petrodollar ends, that's the end of printing money also. So the next time a big you know, crisis happens in the U.S., guess what? There's no more money printing because the petrodollar is coming to an end as well. So breaking Australia's first spot Bitcoin ETF to hold Bitcoin directly officially begins trading. Breaking Thailand just approved its first spot Bitcoin ETF. That's great news for Bitcoin, and that could actually get the market moving once again. But you know, we're XRP investors. We're sitting here just waiting for XRP to take off. And talk about bail-ins. You know what could fix the current banking system? XRP. It works with fiat. All they have to do is utilize RippleNet and XRP and problem solved. But they don't want to fix this current system. They want to make sure this system collapses so they can bring about the new system. And I really don't think we are going to be cashing out crypto into USD when the time comes. Things do not look good going forward for the US dollar. The whole world wants something else other than the US dollar. They want a level playing field. And people need to understand that. As country after country pulls away from the U.S. dollar, what do you think is going to happen? People always think like the government is somehow going to change everything. The only thing that the government resorts to to fix the U.S. dollar is war. And guess what? The world is done with war as well. People would rather have peace going forward. Every time you turn around, it's conflict after conflict. You know, why don't we push towards peace instead? Maybe that's a better approach for the United States. Instead of threatening all these countries with the U.S. dollar and sanctions, maybe they should try a different approach for once. But that's just my thoughts on that. You know, we are going to get rich off of XRP. It's just a matter of time. And we will talk more as time goes on, as the price of XRP rises, about not selling too soon. Because there's going to be people out there telling you the top is in time and time again, only to watch XRP go even higher in price. But we'll cross those bridges as we get to them. Till it all happens, stay patient, stay positive, and let's get rich together. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.